Well, earlier today, we spoke live with the new energy secretary, Chris Wright. We also kept the conversation going after the live part of the interview, which is about 940 this morning. And we began the second part of our exclusive interview by asking the energy secretary about how we can produce more energy, but do it in the most environmentally sensitive way. I think the conflict there is more perceived than real. You know, what we've done over the last 10, 15, 20 years globally, I have called the greatest malinvestment in the history of the world. Maybe $4 trillion has been invested mostly in wind, solar, batteries, and transmission systems. Um, it hasn't changed the mix of the global energy uh, stack at all. We've got a little bit less than 3% of global energy comes from wind, solar, and batteries. Less than 3%, all in the electricity sector. And everywhere with high penetration, we've seen more expensive electricity and a less stable grid. One thing we know for sure, that's not going to continue. The rest of the world will never adopt a model like that. The only way you're going to change global greenhouse gas emissions is with energy technologies that are affordable, reliable, secure, make people's lives better, and have lower greenhouse gas emissions. Like, like what? What are those things? Well, the biggest one by far today has been natural gas. The U.S. has reduced our greenhouse gas emissions more than the next seven countries combined. And it's mostly been by market forces. Natural gas has outcompeted coal as just as cheap or cheaper and cleaner burning, meaning less pollutants as well as less greenhouse gas emissions. That's a model that can grow and can scale. And hence, that's why it has been the biggest driver of reduced emissions. Wow. So that's a pretty big statement, that malinvestment or misinvestment, Brian. It gives you kind of a, a hint of what might be up their sleeve. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that statement, Kelly, but the reality is that if we're going to produce more power, and the Japanese prime minister was here, is here, I should say, in town today meeting with President Trump to buy more natural gas, if we are going to do it, I'm not saying we are, but it looks like we are, we should do it in a way where we can do it as smart as possible and not contribute to a warming planet. Now, I also asked Secretary Wright about our, as a nation, sort of renewed love affair with nuclear energy and the real fear, Kelly, that if and when we restart some of these older nuclear reactors, I'm looking at you, Three Mile Island, we make sure that some of that power goes to homes and neighborhoods and not just to the highest bidder of big technology. We've had 30 percent increase in electricity prices under the last administration with almost no demand growth. Now we have rapid demand growth. You hit a key issue right there. So we need to balance both of those. We need to supply that electricity so this in industry of manufacturing intelligence, AI, stays in the United States. But we want to stop the price rises for consumers, which means we need more supply. What's the biggest supply growth for electricity that can happen in short order? Natural gas. But nuclear now has commercial buyers, data centers, that will pay a premium for that electricity. That's just what we need, a market force that will pay a premium for a technology that can't compete with natural gas today, but maybe it can in five or ten years. And we're going to have private capital driving the construction of these new small modular reactors at scale. Is that going to happen? Are SMRs actually going to occur? Because right now they're kind of just, I don't want to say a pipe dream, but they're not far off of a pipe dream. The long talked about nuclear renaissance yes. is finally going to happen. Okay. That is a priority of this for me personally and President Trump and this administration. You're going to see that move in the coming years.